Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show that asks you to pull out your TTRPG books, pull out a chair, and join us at the table. Uh, really quick introductions. Uh, please, Mr. Michael Powell, tell them who you are and where they can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Well, I'm Michael Powell, and you can find me all over the internet on my social media, which is at Mr. Kapow. That's M R K A P A O. Very, very nice. So my name is PJ McGaw. You can find me all over the internet at PJ.McGaw. And when I'm not here Tuesdays at the table with my man, Mr. Michael Powell, you can find me Wednesdays here on the Nat 20 channel doing Edge of Legend, the Pathfinder 2nd Edition homebrew show. And excited, really excited to see uh, what comes next in this next episode. But today, we're going to be doing a character build with you all. That's right. With the new amazing playtest material that Pathfinder put out, that Paizo put out, just today we're so excited we had to talk about it we are going to be using the gunslinger rules to make hollywood fan favorite keanu reeves masterpiece john wick so come and see what happens maybe even agree disagree come up with different thoughts put them in the comments let us know we're excited to make the baba yaga you're breathtaking uh we are here at the table to make something today. Now, we just got the play test material and we started talking about it and it was really exciting. So we thought today we would go through and build John Wick. Now, before I get into John Wick, I wanna put out, uh, cause I saw it in the chat, uh, there was a question from Wither King about, did we finish building the organization from last time? Uh, so the short answer is yes. If you remember on the show, we fully built the organization and it is so cool. Uh, this really exciting, for lack of a better word, uh, Eastern Ghostbusters that kind of take in the negative energy of curses, hexes, and malicious spirits, and then kind of uh, purifies them and then purges them back out, right? Yeah, they um, take them upon themselves, kind of eat it, and yeah. Exactly, and we've kind of come up with this idea that like they're colloquially known as curse eaters. Mm -hmm. Some find it offensive because it's, you know, some don't. The, really, the only thing that we didn't officially land on was the name. We had the Order of the Empty Soul. It was kind of a place marker. And, and kind of the frustrating thing is we also have the Empty Ministry. So I feel like having the Empty Ministry and the Empty Soul is a bit redundant. So while we're building John Wick, if you have any ideas on name for that organization that really cool and I'm really proud of, that organization we built last week, let us know. Uh, Reap Psyche said the soul poopers. No. 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 Psyche, we're not going to call it the soul poopers. Uh, stop it. Um, but, but I love where your head's at. Uh, so we're, let's, let's make some John Quick. Uh, first of all, while you guys are thinking about names for the organization of, of monks and, and barbarians and warriors that fight this evil uh, energy and purify the land, uh, well, I think of a name for that. What level should John Wick be? I think that's the first question, because we already know the ancestry. He is a human. He is not an elf. He has to be, I feel, level, at least level 15. Yeah. He's Baba Yaga. I mean, he's got, he's got a long reputation of working for the Russian mafia. Yeah. I think even, like, moonlighting for the Italian mafia... And I think he definitely has connections to the triad. He's been around. He's people. been around. He's definitely been around. Oh, see you later, Sydney. Have a great time at that D&D &D game. And uh, hopefully I will see you soon. Um, it's, uh, it's a game that uh, uh, sometimes we play together. Um, so, yeah, we've got to figure out the level. I'm very solid for a 15 on, Mike, on, on John Wick. Um, if you in the chat think he'd be 20, 15, 8, whatever, let us know. Oh, and by the way, uh, one of my suggestions for that uh, organization we talked about last week was, mm -hmm. I believe, Order of the Open Void or something like that. I like the word void. You, you did mention the void a lot. My uh -huh. concern was that that's, that's how they do their work, not why they do their work. So I don't want to be like, like, unless you like revere the wrench as the most amazing tool and you have a whole order of the wrench because, like, oh, you believe in it so much, it'd be really weird to call... Um, like a repairman order of the wrench. Although I mean, the idea honestly, of... um, there are some steampunk works basically does that. 
Well, true, but again, like they they worship the spanner, right? Mm-hmm. Like they use it for everything. So I I feel like don't get me wrong. Order the wrench sounds dope, especially as like this. These oh, I think it was mechanics. my original like, thought was uh, the <laughs> martyrs of the of the empty void or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, uh, we yeah. should decide a. Cl- uh, let's see. No, we should actually let's do this right. Let's decide a background for um, John Wick Ooh, first. Yes. Yes, let's do that. Um, so we know his ancestry is going to be human because mm-hmm. he is human. Let's decide his background. Is there – hmm, this is a good question because there's so many backgrounds now, and they're all really good. Are we, are we creating, like, John Wick by Vatum? By Vatum? Like – Beat by beat, this is John Wick using Pathfinder rules or a character similar to John Wick to put into this world. I think we should build John Wick verbatim. Okay. If we want to put, because if we want to put John Wick into Edge of Legend, uh, we can change his name. Mm-hmm. But I think the, the exciting part is like, oh man, how do you build John Wick? All right, all right. Okay, with John Wick. I'm looking through, I'm looking through, I'm looking through. I kind of want, there was one class because, well, I feel like it's, we, we could spoil the movies a little bit, right, PJ? Because we're <coughs> literally talking about building John Wick, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, spoilers, if you have not seen John Wick 1, 2, and 3, um, let us know in the chat about spoilers, and we'll try to make it as spoiler-free as possible. If you want to spoil John Wick, or if you want to just talk about all the awesome things John Wick did, like the time he killed five dudes with a horse. Let's talk about it. That scene was insane. But um, I think we should... Uh, wasn't he... He was basically an orphan that was taken in by an organization, right? Uh, gosh, I believe so. He was... He was kinda, young. Yeah. Orphan. Because I kind of want to say maybe have him as a refugee... Or a s- street urchin or squire? Hmm, street urchin or squire. I kind of like street urchin because he was definitely raised in that sort of Russian organization mm-hmm. that taught him how to fight, mm-hmm. how to shoot, and he's covered in those like Russian Orthodox tattoos. True. So but he I was definitely like, raised yeah. in that environment. I personally like squire basically because. He was, for all the reasons you just said, and also because it was an organization, and a squire is basically a trainee of established organization. Hmm. Maybe, but because a squire, because he was also taught other stuff like you know, um, etiquette and you know what to do. Honestly, he was a trainee hitman. That's what a squire is in that world. Yeah, no, he absolutely was. uh, See, see, here's my thoughts. So we we want to make the building steps of John Wick, and I honestly believe everything, even the etiquette, was all to build him to become an assassin. I mean, he even went to the Middle East somewhere in equilibrium to meet with the people that, like, basically owned – his the, the greater of his organization. Yeah. I think he had, ended up like having to cut off a finger for them. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I'm leaning towards Squire. You're leaning towards Street Urchin. I think we should put this vote to chat. What chat? Which one? Squire or Street Urchin? Absolutely. And if you find a better suited one for this assassin type character, offer that up as well. Yeah. So, you know what? Let's put a pin on that and now just choose class yeah so clearly gunslinger um <laughs> yep gunslinger. but uh i mentioned earlier about the improvised weapon fighter master archetype do we want to include that knowing how lethal he is with a pencil with a book that with would be good horse? but honestly uh, i'm leaning more towards that rogue archetype because honestly he's he's like the, he's like the predator as a human like he gets his kills through, like, him jumping people, basically. I mean, I don't know. Like, he, he does both. Because we've definitely seen scenes 
where he surprises people and he's very good at stealthing in those regards. But think of all the scenes where he's literally just running through an open gunfight, just mowing bros yeah. down. Well, one of the things is I suggest Rogue because that also opens up the assassin racket. True. However, there's also an assassin archetype. Mm. And I feel like the assassin archetype is probably better suited for what we want here because the assassin uh, racket is a little more limited and would require a lot more finesse with the build. But the assassin archetype would probably get us exactly what we want and more out, out of that out of that build. Let's just really quickly see. Yeah. Assassin. Because if you look the at the backstabber, advanced... Backstabber, poison resistance, surprise attack. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm agree. I'm, I'm looking, I see surprise attack and sneak attacker and angel of death. Oh. And, and assassinate. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going with that archetype. Yeah, so I think I, I think the uh, the assassin archetype, which can be found on page... Oh, man, I just had it. It's got the dumb-looking orc. There he is. Page 158 in your advanced player's guidebook. Um, so we can definitely take the assassin there oof and the good thing as a 15 build he could take all of these yeah. as long as they don't make him lose anything from gunslinger that we'd also find to be important yeah no i agree um yeah Brian gunslinger with that. uh yeah. he's a little he's a little mad but i think it'll work out having gunslinger with assassin <laughs> and improvised uh uh weapon user yeah I mean, I think I don't know if it'll be too mad. It's it's mostly Dex and Int at this mm -hmm. point, with a little bit of wisdom for just you know basic needs. I'm trying to find the improved weapon fighter. I wonder if it's weapon fighter, or not imp not improved, improvised. It's definitely a thing. It's in one of these books, that's for sure. I mean, yeah, uh, Wither King, you're right. We could give him the free archetype into improvised <sighs> weaponry. Here we go. Weapon. It's called weapon improviser. Oh, that's that's not yeah. bad. Okay, weapon now, improviser. PJ, what, what, do, what do you think about this? Actually, no. Actually, this is what I would do. He's a gunslinger, but we give him, using the variant rule of free archetype, give him assassin, and then later on open it up to improvised weaponry. You read my mind. I think that's the way to go about it. Yeah. Um, I, the main re reason I chose this is because I feel, yeah, he was formally trained first as an assassin, and by gaining his skills and everything later on, he just got good with using whatever was around him. Yeah, I mean, like, okay, so a little look behind my curtain. Um, I I grew up learning a lot of martial arts, and one of the, one of the martial arts I learned was knife fighting. Uh, it's different styles. Um, older European, uh, I learned a little bit of Thai knife fighting, but the point is this. Once you know enough about most fighting styles – using and incorporating random weapons is just like copy paste yeah you know so like if you know the seven deadly parts of human body you can take a pair of scissors and murder someone just as easily as you would a six inch serrated blade you could kill someone with a book just as easily as you could with a door jam mm -hmm. or a mace especially if you're using it as like leverage on their spinal column yeah anyway that's that got dark. Um, so building, building John Wick. Uh, yeah, he's an assassin free archetype. But, um, okay. We <coughs> do have to uh, take certain uh, steps before we could give him... Oh, can we, can we... With the free archetype, can we just give him whatever without really paying attention to the prereq? Uh, not really. So if, okay, I, if so, I remember correctly, yeah. basically what it does is it means that you get... You get access to all the feats at the first level, mm -hmm. but you still have to choose them. Okay. And so, so you just... yeah, so which means, yeah, we'll get, uh, using the variant human rules, he would have uh, alchemical crafting because you need that to get assassin. Hmm. That's a very good point, actually. Yeah. Uh, well, alchemical crafting, it's the skill, right? Because remember, it's a the... skill feat, yeah. Because remember, the gunslinger starts off with crafting. Doesn't say what variant. We could make it crafting alchemical. Sure, sure. No, no, not skill. It's it's actually a, it's a feat. The alchemical crafting feat. Oh, I see. Well, the good thing is we have fifteen levels to accomplish that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so he's a level fifteen human, um, street urchin. 
or did we decide? Because the only thing I saw is Pengu Chan making a good point that Squire sounds too knightly, and that doesn't make as much sense for John Wick. Um, so let's just say straight for now. I'm I'm very happy and open to literally anything that we feel works more. Because yes, he was an orphan ripped out of the Russian Orthodox Church at a young age and put into this murder program, but. D- did that could translate into anything, especially like, are we looking for background at his youth or background at his early days as True. a contract hitman for like multinational criminal organizations? True. True. Cause he technically could be a bounty hunter. Cause he killed, he killed specific targets. I mean, if you go with the whole thing where with uh, his childhood, he could also have been a, a, a what is it? A acolyte. He could have been, uh, because and spoilers in the third episode, the third movie, they really kind of delve into his past within the Russian Orthodox Church. Um, it, he he kind of believes, but mostly it's like his belief in the Russian Orthodoxism is just to kind of navigate this world that he's killing people in. Ooh, I kind of want to say, courier. In his youth, he earned coin running messages for people of wealth and influences. But in this world, he's earning coins by killing people yeah. of wealth and influence. And also the fact that the coin thing with Coin Wick, or the John Wick. Yeah. Or so he saying... even put criminal, because <coughs> technically that is a, he is a criminal. I mean, the guy for sure is a criminal. Let's not, let's not paint over that. He just has a lot of friends in the force because he, he, he I helps think the force them. is part of the organization. That's also a good point. Let's, just, let's make it easier on ourselves. Let's say criminal, because Bounty Hunter kind of suggests that he works with the law, which he does not. Street Urchin suggests that he kind of uh, he learned his trade by being a poor kid on the streets, which is kind of true. But I think at, at his heart, he's a criminal I with mean, a heart of gold yeah. who's going into business for himself. I mean, if you want to go all the way to John Wick 1 when we were first introduced to him, he could be a hermit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I feel like as much as he's a hermit, he's he's really an assassin who's just taken the ooh, day off. Ooh, ooh, PJ, PJ, PJ. I just, yeah, I just yeah. read this one. Yeah. Martial Disciple. Ooh. Well, yeah. It, actually. No, let's, let's see what they define as martial because the benefits may not really. Well, you dedicate sense. yourself to intense training and rigorous study to become a great warrior. The school you attended might have been a traditional monastery, an elite military academy, or the local branch of a prestigious mil- uh, mercenary organization. Uh, two, the two, your two boosts is strength and dexterity. You and can, you can you choose train either your acrobatics yeah. or athletics, and also uh, w- warfare lore, and you get the cat vault. Cat okay. vault. Considering, considering this guy takes a nasty fall at the end of, I think it's two, uh-huh. Maybe even three, and this guy drops easily four stories, maybe even ten stories, and survives. Catfall is th- this is it. Martial disciple is his background. Bottom All line. Right. Uh, and for those who watched it, uh, spoiler not spoiler. I'm not telling you why he falls because he falls for a very specific reason. Go check out Equilibrium. It's oh god, Equilibrium is such a good movie. Uh, Marshall. Disciple. So what we have right now, what we have here, John Wick level 15, human, martial disciple background. Uh, Gunslingers is going to be his main class. With a gunslinger, with a free archetype of improvised, of assassin. Assassin. Yeah, thank you. Because, <coughs> duh, that's that's what yeah. he's... And then, later on, he gets the improvised uh, weapon thing yeah assassin uh with boop, boop, with weapon improviser that's what's called yeah, weapon, weapon improviser, improviser. anything is we don't even have to go deep into that to get yeah. i think the things that really make sense for him just basically so that he can do lethal damage and have no penalties to swing mm-hmm. what literally what so there's a scene where these dudes are chasing him in new york city somehow he winds up in one of those handsome carriage cabbies like where they keep the horses and he outright murders five dudes with a horse, not, not on the horse with the horse. It's a, it's a damn good scene. Right. It's I feel really like cool. we should uh, decide what uh, assassin archetype feats we could take. We should take before, uh, 
because we need to take two to uh, to level out of this archetype to get weapon improviser. Yeah, well, it's also a free archetype, so I don't think technically that's entirely true. No, no, Basically, no. Uh, the dedication is doesn't count. You have to gain two other feats. Got it. Okay, because I know I know with the free archetype, the rules are a little different. Um, let me get let me get to assassin really quick. Archaeologist. I need two asses and one in. There we go. Um, okay. My recommendation at level four would be, of the three, we have expert spec backstabber, poison resistance, and surprise attack. I'm going with surprise attack. Hmm. Thinking about it. Because it says, you act before your foes can react. On the first round of combat, you roll deception or stealth for initiative. Creatures that haven't acted are flat-footed to you. That yeah. feels like a lot of his fights. He gets I, to jump. I think you're right because, yeah, a lot of times when he's running through dudes, he's literally popping them before they can pop him. Yeah. I think surprise attack. Bit of a weird way to get there, but I think you're right. Mm -hmm. um, Angel well, of Death, I mean, that's yeah. just him. Yeah. Uh, all your strikes against a creature you have marked for death have the death trait, causing the mark to be instantly killed when reduced to zero hit points. Because, like, how many times has this guy just slaughtered people? Yeah. Like, honestly, I don't... I think he should just get Angel of Death at level 10. Mm -hmm. And then later on, he might have the beginnings of improvised weaponry. Yeah, I'm making it right now. So we have the dedication, surprised attack. I mean, I even really kind of want to give him assassinate. You strike with one swift movement, try to instantly slay your mark. Make a strike against your mark. If you hit, your mark takes 6d6 extra precision damage with basic fortitude save against your class DC or spell DC, whichever is higher. If the mark critically fails, they die. This is an incapacitation effect. The target then becomes temporarily immune to your assassinate for one day. Like, I can see him taking this and just, like, mowing through people. <laughs> uh, one second here. Allowing something. There you go. Um, let's see here. Bounty Hunter, because he isn't level one. His background is, is his campaign story. So I'm just catching up on the chat. Um, Wither Keen is apparently upset because we shot down their Barb Monk, but seemed fine potentially taking on an assassin. Oh, are you talking for uh, for John Wick? I mean, that there's a big potential. Uh, my apologies, Wither King. If you're talking about Barb Monk for John Wick, I I might not have seen it in the chat. Um, I can definitely see Barb Monk because the the resistance. The guy yeah. takes such a beating I, in all I these think movies. The, the Barb Monk was he wanted to build a barbarian monk for the the order that we were designing. Oh. Because I do remember, I believe Adam Generator and Wither King were talking about making an organization for Barb Monk. But then it's or... kind of evolved into something else, which honestly, yeah. it does happen sometimes. Yeah, no, don't get me wrong, Wither King. I love the idea of a barbarian monk. So, how about this? Next time we do a build, uh, no, my previous idea, that's correct. Next time we do a, a, pre a build, why don't we create an NPC? who's a barbarian monk combination. We'll decide the, the levels and everything else. Um, cause, cause you, cause my bad, because I think I interpreted what you were saying as an organization where a barbarian monk would come from. Uh, so my apologies on that. Um, but it ended up becoming pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think so. And I think, I think we, the chat and, and us, everyone, built something mm -hmm. that we shall be really proud of because yeah. that organization sounds dope. Uh, so we have the assassinate. Let's see how many things of the w a weapon improviser we actually want. Yeah, Unless, I mean of, of assassin. I just think so far the feats that would make sense for John Wick would be surprise attack, mm -hmm. maybe sneak attacker, angel of death, and assassinate. But we could x out the sneak attacker and just have what is it? A uh, surprise attack, angel of death, and assassinate. Well, I definitely, I definitely think uh, surprise attack was the better choice. I think you did, I think you did a really good one there. Uh, level thirty seems fine. <laughs> You're right, Wither King. We should make him level thirty because John Wick is basically a god. Um, let's see here. Weapon improviser. Let's see. 
Well, we could take we'll take the de definitely take the dedication, which means mm -hmm. we don't John Wick won't take the normal minus two penalty to attack rolls with improvised weapons. Additionally, uh, let's see, whenever you gain a class feature that grants you expert or greater proficiency with any weapon, you also gain that proficiency with the improvised weapon. <coughs> yeah, which obviously that's that's a big one um, because everything is lethal in his hands. Um, oh wow, you can also take surprise strike at level six for uh, improvised uh, weapon improviser. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can yeah you can. Whenever you make a strike with an improvised weapon against a creature that hasn't seen you, make a strike using an improvised weapon, or that is otherwise ignorant of your skill with the weapon, the creature is flat-footed. All right. Uh, let's see. Improvised pummel. Um, I can see that. But I'll see improvised critical and also makeshift strike. See, I, you know, I'm trying to figure out mechanically how to explain why he's able to kill people with pencils and books and i feel like it's really just the assassinate mark for death ability mm -hmm. that he's that he's putting on the pencil because he, he lays the guy down he takes the pencil and basically just slaps it really hard through his ear canal yeah. I ideally mean, putting into his brain it wouldn't go into his brain i mean the brain sits above the ear but still yeah pj i mean honestly i would not be mad if it just take the dedication just the dedication I mean, the dedication alone, I feel like, is all he really yeah. needs. He gets so much from everything else. Yeah, because I don't think he's going to get a third dedication. No, and if we and if we split up too much with dedications, with the, yeah. with the archetypes, we're going to lose a lot on the Gunslinger. So yeah. now that we've talked about all the crazy things Gunslingers do, what do you think is John Wick's way? Is he a drifter? Is he a pistolero? Like, he can clearly snipe, but what do you think? Also, I love the chat. Does John Wick ever miss? I, I honestly don't remember him ever missing. I do remember him running out of bullets. I kind of want to say, <coughs> honestly, I see him as that middle ground. I see him as a drifter. Mm -hmm. He does a little bit of both. You know, I can definitely agree with that, not only for, like, the story they're telling with him, you know, the hermit coming out of retirement and just beating people to death, but also the flexibility aspect because he can snipe, but he's not as good as he like the people he's fought who are actually snipers, but he can close yeah. the distance very main, well. I want to say main for a fact of Drifter's Wake. Oh God, you're right. All the times he just wades through enemies. That's yeah. totally Drifter's Wake. Yeah. Okay, dope. Let's go for that. So his way is Drifter, uh, is the whip. Uh, yeah, it is the Drifter. Gunslinger. Drifter's way. I was almost say Brifter's way with a B. That's not a, that's not a word. There we go. Drifter's way. Okay, so is the way the Drifter. Um, so he's going to get all that stuff. Um... Da, 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 da. Now, I guess the big question is, when do we want to take the Assassin Free Archetype? We could just I take mean, it at level assassin one. Assassin Free Archetype, you take, him, you take it at first level. You just yeah. tack it on, so you don't have to worry about that at all. Yeah, I think you can do that instead of taking uh, an Ancestry feat or no, a... I, or uh, a PJ, I believe you just take it. That's it. No, no, no. It's, it's, not, it's not that simple. I was reading it and, it, and maybe it is, but when I was reading it, it said like, you gate access to it at level one, and basically you have to replace certain feats with these other archetypes. It's not, it's not, it's, it's called a free archetype because you don't have to like spend levels to dedicate into it. But from what I read of the optional rule, you don't just get it for free on top of everything else because that would be a little crazy. It just means that you don't have to be forced into the dedication. You can like move things around in your ancestry or whatever first level to effectively start with it already, as opposed to having it at level two. Now, I might be wrong. I'm sure Adam Generator yeah, I, I, or the amazing people in the chat will correct me, but that's what I remember reading. And I'm, I'm going to get it again, too. I, 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 uh, Wither King said it seems it's that free. So, uh, yeah, because I've been watching some videos recently. Yeah. So, and uh, everybody's been explaining it to me, at least. You just take it. <laughs> uh, here we go. Playing with free archetypes. The free archetype character is a bit more versatile and powerful than normal, but usually not so much the imbalance your game. Nope, that's just a hype. I remember reading somewhere they say like 
you basically you don't you don't get it for free. You just get the option to like Do take out whatever think, you want already. Is that maybe a Pathfinder first edition thing? Maybe. No, no, no. They didn't have that. They had um, the archetype combo system. Yeah. Instead. Wither King is agreeing with me. Going, you get the dedication for free, and you get the bonus feats later down the line. I believe. Hmm. Yeah, you basically well, just tack on the free archetype. I don't know where I was reading. Well, whatever. Either way. Uh, so if they're free, then there's no issue. Um, so, so what level one feet you want to give them? Oh, that's a good question. Let's see. Level one, I think, since he's a drifter. Um, and it's, and it's also important to say he's a lone fighter. So a yeah. lot of the abilities that like buff and benefit another person, he probably wouldn't take because he's not really used to fighting in that thing. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, if a practice. I kind of want to say either firearm ace or sword and pistol, because we have seen him using just knives. True knives. He has a, a final fight against uh, Mark Dacascus. I mm -hmm. think there's swords involved there, um, but I feel like I feel like the firearm ace because how many times has he magged out reloaded and immediately like just killed somebody true true uh, let's see so that's my thought i'm going with fire firearms ace number two we have assisting shot blast lock pistol twirl quick draw risky reload and warning shots quick draw Wait, wait, really quick. Mm -hmm. um, because we don't forget, we do need to take certain feats with our archetype. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, well, I already have written down all the assassin's feet. Okay. And the weapon... Oh, I see what you're saying. At level two. But levels, okay. yeah. Yeah. So the so the weapon improviser dedication feat would be at level two. So we can skip these and just put uh, no, that no, no, no. We, we can't go into the weapon improviser until we take two other feats from assassin. But if they're free... Even if it's free, we oh, still okay. to to go to get out of that. We need need to take two other feats from the assassin uh, thing. Okay. Well, either way, we probably won't be able to get dedication weapon improviser until level f uh, four or ten, because mm -hmm. that's the next ones we have written down. Yeah. But level but level two, we mm -hmm. can still decide a uh, yeah a gun feat for level two. I kind of want to say quick draw. That's what I was thinking was quick draw. Because oh, I don't no, no, or, 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 or blast lock. He is he blast locks? I forgot. I, I'm, I'm just I'm I'm reading the first line. Taking the shortest distance between two points involving removing an obstacle obstacle or two. Yeah, oh, never mind. Not blast. Sorry, sorry, never mind. Never mind. You're right. Yeah. You're right. I think I think something draw, else. I think quick draw is probably the best for level two for him. Simple. Yeah effective and he does he does pull from the hip pretty quickly so yeah i'm gonna do i'm gonna say quick draw and then at level four i think that's where we take a surprise attacker from assassin true but if that's a free thing then we just get that now he, and this is why i'm asking because no no we, we still have to use the i believe we still need to use to get the other feats the dedicate just the dedication is free i believe everything else we have to take normally yeah, okay. So that's what I was saying before that after you get the dedication at level one, as opposed to level two, you still have to pull from the other archetypes, but mm -hmm. at that level. So it's not yeah. like, because before it was being said to me in, in this show that it was like, at level four, you just get the level four feet. Mm -hmm. What about uh, your well, main class? King did, does say when you get the class feats, you get bonus feats for that archetype. So, see, as I'm saying, like two feet, that seems really strange. But then again, it is. Everyone is saying it is meant to be more powerful than a regular class. So I don't know. I feel because I've been watching some videos. The dedication mm -hmm. is free as the free archetypes, but everything else, it, you have to take it normally. But I could be yeah. wrong as well. But yeah. that does make sense as well. Yeah, and that's and that's what I was saying too. Is that you get the dedication at level one? I th I thought you had to replace something for it. I guess you don't. Uh, but as you go through. You know, starting as yeah, early yeah. as level one, you have to move. So either way, level four. Let's let's make this easier on ourselves. Do we like any of the level four items better than surprise attack? 
other than running reload, honestly, I w I rather take surprise attacker if it's from assassinate. Yeah, and worst case scenario at level six, we can just jump back in and take running reload. Yeah, because I I'm trying to think pistol arrows challenge. Ooh, I mean I can say reloading, reloading strike? strike maybe. Because there's a there's a moment in number one where he's. Oh god, I think he's magging out on a bread of nine millimeter, and there's this guy he's in front of, and he literally just smacks him in the nose. He pistol whips him in the nose and uses that to mag out, and then as he comes back, reloads the weapon and pops him in the head. Like it was insane. Uh Wither King says, I just asked uh Shifter, and it's free as free gets. And it's as free as free gets. You don't need to take two and then get the normal dedication. Okay, so basically speaking, the only thing that we have to do dedication-wise then would be the non-free archetype, a.k.a. the weapon improviser. So level two, we wouldn't really be able to take quick draw, but we would have to take the weapon improviser dedication. I mean, if we want, we could still take weapon improviser down the line, too. <coughs> True. But would we rather do that at level two and get rid of quick draw and make sure we get the one thing we want out of... That's what I'm thinking. Just get it out of the way, you know? Maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna put that in to be safe. Um, so, there we go. Boom. Okay. So, four. So we're getting surprise attack attacker for free, and we still have to choose a level four class option. My thought is reloading strike, especially since we couldn't get rapid reload or running reload. I think Wait, reloading uh, strikes. Are you saying level ten? Sorry. So, no, 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 no. I'm level six. But, oh, six. Okay. But we have to. We have to choose level four. That's my bad. So at level four, because the fourth level feat apparently is what I'm hearing is free, then that means we still have to pick another fourth level feat. Then we can take running reload if you want. Okay. Okay. This I mean, is the, a cluster. The, yeah. I was going to say, of the, relo of the level six feats, for, for me it makes sense to get the reloading strike of yeah. all the level six feats. That makes sense. And then at level eight... Um, hmm. I want to say, hmm. let me see here. Level Either eight. shooters aim or shooters aim, pair shots, or grit and tenacity. Any of those three, I think, will work with John Wick. Hmm. Make a let's see here because John Wick is freaking tough. He's tough. I, huh? I for me, it's between paired shots and grit and tenacity. Because I'm thinking of the times that he had to shoot uh, uh, SWAT responders with like really heavy armor, and when he only had his handgun, he had to shoot them in the same part of the helmet like three or four times. Yeah. Like that armor, um, but the dude is so damn tough. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why I think Grit and Tenacity is a very solid choice for him. I agree. I agree. I think I, I, I'll go with Grit and Tenacity, honestly. Okay. Let's go with Grit and Tenacity. Have and now it. we're at level 10, which I believe I would rather go with Angel of Death from the Assassin Archetype. Remember, according to what everyone is saying in the chat, it's mm -hmm. free, which means we get Angel of Death and a level oh, 10 feat. Okay. If what, if what I'm hearing and being told is correct, you get both. My original thought was you only you have to choose. Yeah, that's what uh, I thought as well. But I'm being told it's, it's all just free, so who knows? Um, assuming, assuming it is free in that capacity, almost like some weird gestalt rule, what would we take from Gunslinger? My mind is called shot. I agree, called shot. Because Ozzy sometimes he just goes, I'm not going to kill. I'm just going to, you know, wing you. Yeah. Called shots. Also, everyone listening right now, apologies for this very in-depth debate. Uh, uh, Reap Psyche put an amazing link up in our Discord. Link should be in the, in the chat on, on a flow chart of the efficacy of John Wick on his killing spree. Uh, check it out. It looks like a lot of fun. I'm definitely going to go over it in more depth after this build. Um... So we have called shot. Now we're at level 12. We're going to get assassinate for free for your archetype, if what mm -hmm. I'm hearing is correct. I'm still going to go back and double check, but either way, just so I know as a GM. Yeah. But a 12th level, we have glancing shot, incredible ricochet, 
penetrating fighter, blah, 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 penetrating fire, shooter's camouflage, and true grit. True grit, of course, is the grit and tenacity on steroids, yeah. and penetrating fire, shoot two people, glancing shot, still do damage even if you miss. Mm. Incredible ricochet, I, ricochet a shot. I kind of want to say either penetrating fire or true grit between those two. <coughs> Penetrating fire, or because mm. that, especially also that scene where you said he shoots the SWAT team members multiple times to get through their body armor. True, I think True Grit is a bit more accurate in that case because the idea was he he actually couldn't penetrate the armor. He had mm. to he had to constantly shoot to overcompensate their heavier armor. Um, but True Grit again, the guy gets the absolute crap knocked out of him in every single movie, and he just does not yeah. stop um so let's go with true regret all right um unless and this is a third option we haven't been considering what about in cripple ricochet i'm trying to remember if he, if he ricochets shots no i don't think so he, not I, really it's not it's not one of his cornerstones yeah he's really more like get the job done yeah. as opposed to play around yeah he's less equilibrium He's less wanted. Yeah, well, speaking of equilibrium, Dance of Thunder! Um, I want to say either Dance of Thunder or Two Weapon Flurry. Yeah. You know, it's weird. I, I don't it think works I for do... both, both works for him. Yeah. I'm going to say Dance of Thunder because, like, the meat and potatoes of his fighting style is, like, extreme proficiency with one weapon. Mm. You know... I haven't really seen him fight knife and dagger, and I haven't really seen him dual wield guns. But you see him fight with a handgun, and just with a handgun, which, by the way, any gun is lethal. Doesn't matter what it is. But just use, just using a gun, he's able to tear through like ninety dudes. Yeah, you're right. You're right. No, I, you know what? I'm. I'll agree with Dance of Thunder with you as well. Oh, uh, Reef Psyche posted. I love watching you two working out a character. <laughs> Perfect background noise for work. You're welcome. We we like having you watch us. We like to be watched. Uh, at least heard. <laughs> at least heard. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Wither King, you'll get free archetypes uh, in campaign if you play the Mwangi module they're coming out with. That sounds exciting. I'll definitely keep my eye out with that. Because I think that A, would help cement the free archetype rule in my head. Also, their modules are just super fun. So definitely want to check that out. Now, 16. Are we going up to sixteen? I thought we were just going up to fifteen. Oh, you're right. Crap. No, you're right. You're right. Fifteen is the end. I mean, spot. we could go up to sixteen and just give him a either a honestly assassinate from the assassin thing. But if, if it's free, we would also we could take the fatal bullet. I think I think assassinate's at level twelve. I will not give him instant return. No. Yes. No. <laughs> I no. Would... <laughs> I I would refuse. I was gonna say if we do level sixteen, which makes sense because there's a feat there. Uh, you make that your last choice. Yeah, because I would say John Wick never caught a bullet and you reused it. I you know what? I can't even make that argument. Okay, assassins at twelve. I'm super okay with making him sixteen, if for nothing else, than to give him fatal bullet. Good, <laughs> fatal Cause... bullet and nothing else. <laughs> or actually, hold on. Uh, whether a duel to the death or getting getting the jump on your phone, no one can react faster than you can pull your trigger. When using your initial deed instead of interacting... Oh, yeah, that makes your initial deeds good. Mm. Nah, definitely, definitely um, fatal bullet on that. Just just for the sheer lethality of his character. Yeah. While he may be fast in the draw, having, uh, having the drifters thing allows him to pull out his weapon um, within his first round, no problem. Fatal bullet. Okay, so now we haven't gone into ancestry feats, and that's fine. I don't think we really need to dive into what part of his human lineage has made him really good at fighting. Mm -hmm. But this is the build that we've been talking about so far with you, with you all. So far, this is the John Wick level sixteen human archetype, uh, human ancestry, martial disciple, gunslinger, free archetype assassin, weapon improviser. At level 16, this bad boy is sporting the firearms ace, run and reload, and reloading strike, because you always got to be firing, always got to be reloading. 
Grit and Tenacity, Called Shot, True Grit, Dance of Thunder, Fatal Bullet, a dedication for the weapon improviser so he can kill you with a pencil, a frickin' pencil, and the, and the free archetype giving him dedication for the assassin feat, marking his opponents for death, which absolutely he does, surprise attacking them out of the darkness when they least expect him, the angel of death, so that he... If you ever see the fight with him and Mark Dukakis, it is, it is a, it's, a, it's a slugfest. And it's like, when will this guy die? Yeah. And so, and so John Wick is like, don't worry. You're going to die eventually. Don't worry about that wounded status BS. I got you. Um, and then assassinate for the end capstone of, of the assassin archetype. And with this, we have someone who can use guns flexibly with great mobility against Wait. a large number of people murdering them one at PJ, a time. Like he wh does. Where, what level do we give him? <coughs> Weapon uh, improviser again? Weapon improviser? Uh, just a dedication feat at level two. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure it's there. Yeah. Uh, Wither King is saying the free archetype variant introduces a shared aspect to, to every character without taking away any of the character's existing choices. It can also provide a lighter version of dual class characters by giving everyone a free multi-class archetype. The only difference between a normal character and a free archetype character is that the character receives an extra class feat at second level and every even level thereafter that they can use only for the archetype feats. Thank you, Wither King. Mm -hmm. I think that's what was getting us all confused. Yeah. So... At second level and every even level thereafter, which to be fair, these all fall on even levels, you just get the archetype that you chose as your free archetype added to those levels, if I'm mm -hmm. reading this correctly. Honestly, if, it's th 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 if that it, that's what it is, honestly, I don't think it's that overpowered, really. I mean, it, it just adds options. Well, that's just it. It is a little overpowered when you compare it to literally anyone else without this feat who would only be getting half of the feats at that level. The fact that at level 12, this guy can get mm -hmm. Assassinate and True Grit, or, yeah, Called Shot, is pretty crazy. It's Honestly, not, I mean, like, it's ever, since I, ever since I heard about the, that free archetype variant rule, I've been a fan. I mean, don't get me wrong. I am a fan of it, but you have to go in knowing that this is not at all on the same power level as not using it. Simply, if for nothing else, the fact that a free feat that no one else gets at that exact same economic build will throw off the balance of the build a small bit, but it'll throw it off a little bit. But if it's as deep as it says, where like you just get the feat for free and this is, this is no way detracts from choices made on the primary class. Now, if it is mandatory, so like, okay, you get this dedication feat at level one for free, but as you level up, when this level pops up, you have to choose from the archetype instead of the main class. That's a balancing feature that I think kind of makes it a little more, you know what I mean? So you don't have to worry about like wasting levels down the line about investing you start off with it already built into the character and then you just start and then from there on out you just get the archetype options to choose from at that level like level four okay i can automatically choose from anything this archetype gives me or i can choose from everything my class gives me you see what i'm saying yeah let's see <coughs> uh let's see here uh in chat we have uh with the king says the more heroic you oh, close the more heroic you want characters to be, you give them more stuff. Let's see. But it, but it's for whatever playstyle fits the person. And also, Reap Psyche says, ask any online accountant, free feats are a very powerful motivator. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I'm not saying anyone is wrong. I'm saying I'm not sure. You know, the, the falling here is that I've, I've heard and read it and had it described a couple of different ways. And I want to make sure that my brain absolutely understands it so that I can implement it correctly. Mm. Um, and again, like going into a character build, this, this level 16 character build, this guy has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 feats, a lot of feats for level 16 character, not including general skill or ancestry. 
But the fact that most level 16 classes would only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine, as opposed to the 15, like that's a pretty big gap, you know? Like the fact that you have two characters at the exact same level, and if we did this as we believe we understood from the chat, that means there's like four to five feet difference between two characters at the exact same level with this ruling. It's really, you know, and it, ugh, an assassin on top of this for free is like, it's really good. It's also a little crazy. So I want to make sure I'm reading it right, just so that like, if we use free archetype, we're using it correctly. We're using it in a way that as a GM, I can plan around, you know, not just more power for the sake of more power, but more power for the sake of interesting and hopefully not too, too overpowered. Hopefully. Not too I mean, I, 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 you know what? I would agree with you. It would be a little OP if, honestly, the, can, the class, the players in the campaign are getting levels super duper fast. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that also can get out of control campaign. really fast. Oh, no. In that case, yes. No, in that case, that's a – well, I, I think no matter how you slice it, it's, it's – no matter how the leveling system goes, it's still going to be a problem. Mm. It even says so in the book. Free archetype characters are a bit more versatile and powerful than normal characters, but usually, oh, usually not so much. I misread that. Never mind. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, let's let's bury this yep. because the free archetype rule is fun. We played with it today, and it's not really the point of the episode. The episode was about gunslingers, and we made a really cool John Wick. Uh, you're probably more powerful than normal. Yeah, it will be. Um, anyway. That being said, we have a level 16 John Wick human martial disciple gunslinger free archetype assassin because he's just he's just an assassin all day with a weapon improviser archetype. He has uh, the assassin dedication, surprise attacker, angel of death, assassinate, firearms ace, running reload, reloading strike because always be reloading, uh, grit and tenacity, called shot, true grit, dance of thunder, fatal bullet for that sexy last bit of destroy something and the dedication feat for weapon improviser so he can kill you with a pencil how does that freaking work and there you go we have baba yaga himself and if i if i make you guys fight him good luck no 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 <laughs> no that's not gonna happen no <laughs> what you, you don't want to fight no. one jick one no. jick comes running out of nowhere no. chasing a dog and anyway i believe it is that time we have definitely gone <laughs> over our usual Oh, uh, so much. Our usual schedule, so let's make our goodbyes. PJ, let's start off with you. Absolutely. Uh, really fast, uh, Reap Psyche says that Juan Jick would be the perfect member of the Reckoners. Absolutely he would, because ain't Don't no give him ideas. <laughs> too late. Oh, it's too late. Ah! Anyway. Anyway, my name is PJ McGaw. You can find me everywhere on that sweet, sweet internet at PJ.McGaw. You can find me on TikTok, uh, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. And when I'm not here Tuesdays with Michael Powell, all you lovely legends, I'll be here tomorrow, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for our Pathfinder 2nd Edition homebrew game, Edge of Legend. And uh, they are going into the Green War. It's this giant war that spans the entire world between... Uh, with orcs and goblins teaming up against everyone else, and we'll see who wins. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you there. Michael Powell, tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Well, I'm Michael Powell, and you can find me all over the internet on my social media, which is at Mr. Kabao, that's M-R-K-A-P-A-O, or my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Michael Powell does stuff, because I do a lot of stuff such as my YouTube channel, which is called Fantastic Tales of Adventure. And on Thursdays at 6 p.m., I'm also on the Toyzilla Network channel on Twitch um, for a show called Toyzilla Live, where I'm one of the co-hosts of a toy news and nostalgia show. So, yeah, a lot of cool stuff there. Very, very nice. Thank you guys so much for being patient with us. Today has been an awesome and very long day. It's been a very long week. Uh, but you know what? Hey, it's 2021. Let, let's start strong and let's show it's 2021 that what's not going to be 2020 the sequel. So that's what I say. Thank you so much for joining us here at the table. And we look forward to seeing you same nat time, same nat channel here at the table. Bye, Bye everyone.